Hello everyone and welcome to Purple Rose Crafts. Today we're going to talk about how to read a knitting chart and how to change colors when we're knitting and how to knit with two colors uh, easily. Alright, so here is the knitting chart that I had created. It's going to be a nice and simple two color knitting pattern. I hope you can see this on the video, but over here on the left um, we have what is going to be our repeat uh, for our pink section as well. Uh, we're actually going to start with adding a row of uh, pink across the bottom as well. I didn't show it in the chart here, but you can easily add that on your own. We're going to use our Karen Cotton Cakes. This is in the hydrangea colors. It's this light, lovely uh, blue with gray with a little bit of light green as well. And when we change colors, we're actually gonna do it with our loops and threads in our Snuggly Wuggly in the white. So we're actually gonna use color and then we're gonna add white to, as the pink section, okay? So we're gonna get started here. And now you can use a pattern like this for like a hat. You can definitely add, when we're reading a chart like this, a couple of things that I wanted to note is that when we're Working on one of these charts, if we're working in a back and forth fashion on single pointed needles, we want to go, so we're gonna start our row number one here, and we're gonna work this direction across our row, okay? And then when we come to do row two, when we're on the wrong side of the work, uh, we're actually gonna come up and we're gonna work in this row, which is just one row above. This is our first row right here like this. And we're working across this fashion. So if you can see when we're working through here, it's one of the cotton cakes, one white, then three of the color, one white, one white, and then three color, one white all the way across our row, okay? And then when we're coming back on the back side of the row, we're gonna of course be doing uh, pearl stitches and we're gonna change colors in those as well. So. Here we're going to go with, um, so we're gonna slide our knitting needle up just a touch so you can see which row we're actually working on. And this is easy, like you can take a piece of paper and, and cover up the row that you just finished. So in this case, we're gonna do one color, then three white, one color, then three white, one color, three white. And of course our color is our cotton cakes and our white is the snuggly wuggly in white. Okay, now you can do this obviously in any color you like. You could do burgundy and navy blue. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you decide to do as your colors, okay? Now you might also note on this chart as well that you can see these bolded lines that are happening in each, in, in this square fashion. So what that's actually showing us is sections of 10 stitches. So from here to here, we're showing 10 stitches. And as well, we're showing 10 rows from here to here. So you can imagine how many stitches you need to put on your needle for say a hat, or you can imagine how many stitches you need to put on your, the body of your hat on each row to get towards the crown. So this is gonna show us where our pattern is. We're actually gonna add another pink row. This should all be actually colored in. Um, all the way across this row as well. And we've already done changing colors in knitting before uh, on a row by row basis, I believe, on the channel. So uh, I will link that video in the description below. And then, all right, so what I've done here is I've cast it on our 20 stitches, which is what you can see here between these two sections of our bolded borders here, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is we are, I just added two rows here to our, uh, cast on row just to kind of give us some depth. First, we're gonna actually do this, uh, the row of straight knitting across the top. Now in this case, because it's gonna be just a complete row of white, uh, we're just gonna drop our uh, color and we're just gonna leave it to the side, okay? Now we're gonna pick up the white. What I've done here in the back is I've just stuck it between my index and middle finger and it is underneath, of course, my middle finger. So now it's actually more attached um, in the back and we're not gonna uh, lose it. Okay, so we let our color go now and now we're going to start knitting with our white. All right, and once we get a couple of stitches in, we know we're not going to be pulling on our white super tight because of course it isn't tied into anything yet. And if you are the type of knitter that likes to knit really tight, um, as I usually am actually, you can leave a really long tail here as well to kind of give yourself that length so you don't pull through everything. So you don't actually pull that tail through.
Now, as we work our way back along our purl row in stockinette, what's gonna happen is when we get to the end, these ones are gonna be really loose. So we wanna be really careful that we don't, of course, pull everything through. We're gonna go back across with a second row of white. We're just gonna go ahead and purl our stitches across our row and then we'll be ready to go ahead and get into another row of our color and then we can get into actually our into our pattern so i'll be back in just a moment and we'll be ready to do that all right so here we are after our second row of white so we're going to go ahead and do two rows of blue when i change back color uh from my white to my blue so as you can see here what i have happening is two my two tails and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and insert my needle into the first stitch and as we did before, we're gonna drop our white, pick that up, and we just go ahead and start knitting into each of our stitches. So here we are back to the beginning of our row. We've done two rows of white to kind of give us this nice um, border to our squares that we're going to go ahead and do from this pattern. And we also have two rows of blue that will go ahead and, and give us our separation between our border rows and our uh, our diamond pattern here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually get into uh, this initial row of uh, where we're doing our color changes okay so when we start at the end as i said we have 20 stitches so we're going to start exactly as this pattern shows from this right side and we're going to work our way all the way across oops we're going to work it all the way across our first row okay so if we are looking at um, each of our sections uh, we're going to start with a, a knit one in our blue and then one white then three blue and one white and that's our repeat there so it's going to be white three colors white and so this four stitches basically showing right here is going to be our repeat for this row until we get to the end of the row all right so let's get started now to go ahead and do our color changing i actually like to grab onto both of my colors and i usually hold them separated uh, by one of my fingers like this so you can see i've got the white that's in my middle finger and the blue in my uh, index and so as i said we're going to do our blue is our first stitch so we're just going to go ahead and knit with that and loop it off and then our second stitch oops here we go our second stitch is going to be our white so we've got see our two colors here so now it's easy for me to just turn my hand around and then go ahead and loop with the tight one, which is the white like that, okay? So when we turn our hand over, it kind of get changes our tension a little bit. Okay, so one white, and now we're gonna go back and do three blues. So we're gonna loop our blue, okay? From our index finger, one, two, and three. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and go back and do the one white stitch, okay? So we insert our needle, now we're holding on to everything here, so we turn our hand over and then loop with our second color. Okay, now just one there. Okay, now we're going back to three blues, which we're holding, say, the way we would normally knit them. All right, as if we were just knitting with one color. And now we're gonna insert, and now we're gonna actually, whoops, drop my needle there. Oops. All right, so we insert our needle here. Now bring our white over and across our stitch. Okay, and now let's go ahead and continue that uh, to the end of the row. We finished our first row here of our changing colors. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go actually go back and we're gonna knit our purl row. So we're gonna turn our work around and now we're gonna go back and look at the second row across from this arrow. And we're, again, we're gonna start because we have 20 stitches, we are starting at this bold line here and we're gonna start with one blue and then we're gonna go three whites, one blue. Okay, and we're gonna work our way basically the exact opposite of what we did in the first row, back across 
our second row of our chart here. Okay, we're gonna start with our one blue. Okay. And then we're going to do three white. Now again, I'm gonna hold both yarns just cause I am knitting back and forth and it's only a few stitches between each color. So we have one white. Oops. Two whites and three whites there okay oh, you can see that there so there's our three white now we're going to insert a hook again now we're going to go now what i did is i turn my hand again and i go ahead and loop with the blue it's just for that single knit or purl stitch all right one white And as we go, of course, you can see what's actually happening on our needles. Uh, we wanna make sure that that does go ahead and follow our rows uh, that we're, we're using from our chart, okay? And yeah, sometimes when I'm working my purl row, it is easier to just use one, uh, hold one yarn at a time. That's fine if that's what you prefer to do. Uh, just make sure that you uh, change colors the way that you're supposed to and that you're not um, making a mistake, of course. All right, so the end of our row is gonna finish with three white stitches. Oops, one, two, three. Okay, so there's our three. Okay, so now a couple of things have happened um, across the back of our work here. This is our pearl section or the back side or the wrong side of the work. What you're seeing here is our uh, loops of yarn that are uh, moving in between our stitches. Now keep in mind that the, when you work more than one color, don't pull these stitches too tight, okay? You wanna keep them nice and loose between each of our uh, stitches to make sure that everything is sitting flat on the front. So what I've done in the past is I made this beautiful hat with this uh, lovely, Argyle pattern um, and when I made it the first time I held everything way too tight and so that was really the first time I had worked on you know color changing in this way and what happened was I ended up having so many tight uh, yarn like like sections of yarn in behind where you can see these like long loops I had so many tight ones that I, I couldn't I mean, the hat was garbage. It was way too tight. So just make sure that you leave enough uh, tension, enough extra loop in the back to ensure that you're not holding everything too tight, okay? Of course, when you're working it, you're working everything really close together, right? As you work off from one needle to the next. But when you actually go and spread it out, that's where it needs to be flat once it's flattened and, and kind of sitting in its natural shape. If we look at, say, this example here, uh, where we've got this pretty blue one, or this pretty white one here in the middle, if we go ahead and pull on our loop, let's say it was this piece of the yarn was way too tight in the back um, and we went ahead and kind of like you put it on someone's head look how tight that is now so actually I tighten ended up tightening up several stitches so from here you know you, you can barely see that stitch now because it was it's so tight in the back right and that's what will happen if you if your loops in the back will be too tight those loops will have to exist so uh, what will happen is your knit stitches in the front will end up being way too tight and you won't be able to actually see them so in this case what i will often do is i will come back and um you know kind of give a little tug and get everything kind of back to where it's it, where it should be Right, so kind of like loosen everything back off. And I will sometimes do this in the middle of my work too, to make sure that I can make sure that I'm not leaving things too tight. If you guys have checked out the blog yet, I'm gonna be posting. All right, so, so far we finished our first two rows. We've done a first row of knit and a first row of purl. Now we're gonna go ahead and work into our third row here, which is gonna actually be this one across here. And we just continue working back and forth. So when we're working, we work this way and then this way, and then now we're going back across the third row. Okay, so that's gonna be the center. Again, our pattern is really simple. It's gonna be three of one color and then one stitch of the other all the way along each row. It just depends on how we've situated each set of stitching, right? So in this row, we're gonna start with one stitch of white and then we're gonna do one stitch of blue and then three stitches of white, one blue. Okay, to give us that center kind of diamond pattern. 
All right. So we're gonna go ahead and continue working on this pattern. Uh, so go ahead and, and, and try this one out with just one color, changing color, and then we'll go ahead and do two colors as our accent colors next time, okay? If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below and the bell to be notified of future videos. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so here we have our finished product. What do you guys think? Did it turn out? This actually looks like it's actually kind of perfect. Wouldn't this be like a lovely, uh, cute little pattern that for like a uh, baby hat? Honestly, I just love it. So, you know, give this one a try. Tag us in any posts you put on Instagram. If you use anything from any of our videos, really, go ahead and tag us and we'll go ahead and we will share all of those uh, lovely works to our stories. And of course, check out our blog because I'm going to go ahead and post uh, this chart in the blog as well as um, how to go ahead and do this if you want more of like a, a photo tutorial as well. And I'm going to also include a uh, knit hat pattern for a newborn baby hat. So you can go ahead and make this into a newborn baby hat. And as I said before, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because uh, we got lots more content coming. As I said, we're going to go ahead and work our way through this uh, two accent color chart that I have included here uh, in a separate video. So stay tuned. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time.